July 5th, 2018. Good morning, the stories that you need to know before you head out the door. Fire rips through a plastics plant in Carrollton. Jennifer Leslie, this, this was an intense fire. That's right, but no one was hurt. There were two people inside the Superior Recreational Products plant when the fire started last night, but they were able to get out safely. We're told about 100 people work at the plant making plastic playground and recreational equipment like kayaks. The building is considered a total loss. The cause of the fire still a mystery, but there were storms in the area at the time, so fire officials are looking into whether a lightning strike is to blame. What's up, buddy? <laughs> you know me. <laughs> you good, man. You good. I remember the tones going out. I remember, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, hey, you know, the complex over here, you know, is on fire. So that was July 5th. Yeah. So the crazy thing is, I just got out of a meeting and I never take my phone into meetings. And uh, I have a call and a text from my father in law. And, you know, he usually doesn't call me or, you know, so I hit him back and he's like, hey, uh, he's got like a, like a police scanner or whatever, you know, so he always is listening to it. And uh, he's like, there's a call that went out um, that your sh the shop's on fire. And um, the, the shop's on fire. So I, I call my little brother because he works there. And so, I, you know, I, I get in my car and I'm, I'm in downtown Carrollton. So I start heading towards uh, the shop and I call my little brother. And I'm like, hey, someone's saying that the shop's on fire. And he goes, um, He's like, no, dude, that's, that was the other facility. So in the same week, this place down in, so there's uh, like multiple locations. So this place in South Georgia or Alabama had a, had like a uh, parking lot fire. And he's like, no, man, everything's cool. That was down in Alabama. And right at that time, I'm riding down 27 and I just see this huge billow of black smoke going up. And uh, I'm like, no, dude, this, the place is on fire and uh i got there so early that um they hadn't even ran the hose lines or anything yet and it's like the sun's setting and um i'm in the parking lot and i see uh you know the whole thing's kind of flaming a little bit smoking really good and uh some of the employees of superior superiors where i did my molding so i would i would mold with them and then i had an assembly shop a quarter mile down the street so they bring us the raw boats and we do the assembly so i pull up there and i grew up around these people so i know them all so um just kind of they were still standing there watching and then uh it starts raining and i'm like oh man this is going to be good it's going to be okay and then uh a flame kicks out the back of this building and the building's 200 yards, you know, so you got the flame going in the front and it kicks out the back. And uh, right then it, it kind of hit me. I'm like, this, this thing's not gonna make it. And it's freaking crazy, man, sitting there watching like your whole like life going, you know, like in the, as far as business goes, like in the balance right there of um, like, I wanna get a forklift and go drive, you know, like go drive in there and I can't, I can't like do anything. So I'm just sitting there watching it happen when that flame kicked out the back um i was like Psh, you know kind of just was like that's it and uh i got there so early that so they ran started running the, the the fire hoses and i'm on the inside of the fire hoses you know and you can't ride over i mean there's so much pressure so i ended up having to go back behind the factory to even get out of there and um then the propane tank started exploding or whatever and it's like um and uh funny part is it's like this just happened it just explode you know in the I get a call and I'm like looking at it and it's the freaking newspaper and they're like hey um, we understand you do business in here can you give us a statement and I'm like man I respect what you guys are doing but my freaking life is you know kind of falling apart right now was, um, so me and my my girl um, we were supposed to have dinner that night so she cooked dinner at the house and uh I remember like walking in and it's like 
you know, like your that person, you know, they know you so well, so it's like you kind of can't fake it with them, you know what I mean? And I like wasn't ready to like put that face on yet. So I went into my office and you know, it doesn't matter like what version of God, universe, whatever you like believe in or whatever. But for me, I just, I wasn't even ready to face like the person I'm closest to in the world, you know? And I just went into my office and I got down on my knees and I was just like, this is so much bigger, you know, than I could handle. And um, just right then, I just was like, this is way too big. I can't do it on my own. And I just like surrendered it. And then me and my girl, we went and had dinner, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just, and um, just, just had dinner. And um, that's kind of was the first night, you know, me and my family calling me, my brothers work at the place and everything. And um, so then the next morning, this kind of starts to become like the rebuild of it, you know? And uh, I don't know if you ever like made a really bad mistake or maybe got a bad tattoo or whatever. You know, you wake up the next morning and you're like, is that thing really there? Or, you know, that, and it probably took like, probably took like two weeks, man, before that feeling started to, the feeling to start going away where it's just like this pit in my stomach. I can't, is that a bad dream or whatever? Um, so in the rebuilding process, uh, the very first thing I did was, uh, my double mold, I've sold probably more than Splash 2, I've probably sold more than that than, you know, anything is what made my life, you know, paid my life. So I like panic and the very next day I put the down payment to remake that mold, you know, and I'm a cash based business. So I got, I'm not running off credit. I'm not, you know, and I don't know if I'm going to get any compensation or anything like that. I just panic and put the down payment on the double mold the very next morning. Um, I get a call from the manufacturing facility and they bring me into their, they bring me into their office and they go, hey, you know, you've been a great customer for us. Um, we need a report within a week of what it's gonna to take to rebuild your company. So for the next week, uh, not only am I trying to start to rebuild my company, but I'm also, uh, it's funny, I'm like kind of doing the hypothetical, you know, like a lot of times it's just like you do a report and it's, it's kind of BS. So I'm, I'm writing a report on how to rebuild my company while I'm like actually <laughs> doing it. Um, and this is the part of the kind of the story that you know, it's so cool to me, you know, you like, you make relationships and, you know, you build a community and you don't know, like, you know, it's just it's such a good lesson on how important it is to how you treat people and and just the, the relationships you build. I have people doing stuff for me, like uh, a lot of my products um, were done by hand shaping the plug. So when you do a mold, you can either submit a, a plug to cast the mold off of it, or you can do a 3D rendering. Well, a lot of my stuff was, um, wasn't in 3D, it was hand-shaped. So, for example, I had to go, I had to take the only remaining parts that I had and go get them scanned, and normally a scan will take like uh, three weeks to do. And I got guys, you know, my designer, he's pulling stuff together for me, you know, just anything I need, my design guy that I part, you know, that I designed with, anything I could ask for, he's doing for me right on the spot. Um, these guys who do scan work for me, normally it takes three weeks, they're getting it done in like two days. Um, and that, that was a really cool thing to see people start rallying behind me. Um, so I'm writing this report, I'm getting mold quotes, you know, to, to say uh, what it's gonna take to get it back. Um, and just these little things that are, just these little like, coincidences or, or miracles, whatever you want to call them, or ha like, so I write this whole report, and I have the quotes, and I have everything, and you know, I'm like, I feel really good about it, but I don't know what they're going to say about it, if they're going to, am I asking too much, is it not enough, how am I, you know, it's, it's I'm, who's ever wrote, you know, I've never done this before, I don't know what I'm doing, and I wake up the morning before I have to present it to them, and something tells me, you need to get a second set of mold quotes, so I get a second set of mold quotes, and it's so, it's like in a movie, man. It's like the meeting's at 5.30 and 
and I'm like on the phone, I'm like, break the meeting up, you know, I gotta have these mole quotes, <laughs> like these, these dudes are like literally trying to get me a, like four mole quotes in one day, and it's like getting later and later, and I'm like, tell the secretary, I'm like, break the meeting up, I gotta have the numbers or whatever, and they send the number, I forward the numbers on to my girl before, I, cause she's printing out the report, I forward the numbers on to my girl, um, before I even see them, and I get there, and I'm kind of checking them out, and like, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's within like, three dollars to completely validate my previous quote to that and so um, I give that to them and uh, you know the story can jump around so many different ways but just kind of give you guys an idea of some of the stuff we were facing like I just made the down payment on my sub plus mold I made the down payment on it paid half of it and a week later the mold was destroyed and I had to make the decision, do I pay the second half of that mold without even getting any, you know, no idea if I'd get paid back or anything. Cash-based business, don't even really hardly have, you know, the funds to do it. So put half down on the mold, mold burns down. We double down and pay the other half of the mold while it, we pay the other half of the mold for a completely destroyed mold. Just, you know, having faith that it's gonna work out. So on top of all that going on, um, so this is July 5th. I have planned to go to every summer. I go back to my place in uh, Canada. That's where I'm from. And so I have a I have a three month old. <laughs> she was born in March. So I got a three month old. Um, I'm living with my then you know girlfriend, baby mama, you know love. And um, so my plan was to to propose to her in Canada. So I got the ring. And, uh, and the freaking shop burns down, you know, and I don't even know if I'm gonna go to Canada or not. I remember coming back from getting a mold scan, meeting her dad in the parking lot of this gym and asking him if I could marry her, you know? And um, it was so cool, my brother talked about something, and it's so powerful for me, he talked about this thing about not, you know, like what's gonna define your year, what's gonna define you, what's gonna define your seasons. And, um, you know, when I look back on last fall, I didn't even look at the, the fire, you know? That's not what defined my year. What defined my year uh, was basically, you know, having my daughter and getting engaged and, and, and that aspect of it. When I think back about that year, that, that's what I think about, not, not the fire. So um, I submit the report and basically there's nothing else to do you know, in your head, it's like, oh, maybe they'll, um, maybe they'll get me money back in, you know, it's like, oh, it'll be a couple weeks, no problem. Dude, it didn't end up being like, I think four months or something like that. So I submit the report and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to Canada. I'm going to propose to this girl, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, it, it's just crazy what kept happening. So I'm in a rest area in Canada and one of my customers called me up. And he places like he places like a you know, multiple hundred thousand dollar order with me, and he's like, "Man, we're gonna we're gonna do like a half down too." You know, I didn't ask him to do none of that, and um, that's ended up what basically allowed me to, you know, kind of ride that out to stay in business. Again, we don't have credit, nothing like that, and. You know, I'm sitting in this party lot, you know, I, I have no molds or, you know, they're maybe either damaged, whatever, uh, no molder. And, uh, you know, I just had, yeah, we'll get it done. No problem. We'll have it for you. And uh, again, we're just like, you know, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not conning the dude. I really know we can do it. And this is where, um, again, it jumps around a little bit, but so I... So this kind of gets to the molder aspect and now kind of as we continue to kind of start to rebuild. So um, I cast last year. Um, I developed a product called Biac with a guy named Aaron. Um, me and him, we developed Biac into, it was, had some thermoform samples. Me and him developed it into a roto molded product. Um, I ended up selling, I ended up selling um, the Biac project and so uh, the guy who I sold it to was down at ICAST, uh, down at ICAST with, with Biac. So this is kind of ties into the molder. So I get a call and it's like, uh, Luther, 
ciphers uh, from Bonafide, Yak Attack. And he calls me up. He goes, hey, I was talking with, uh, talking with the Bayak guy. And uh, he's, he, he told me what happened to your shop. If there's, if there's anything we can do for you, uh, let me know. And so I don't know if he would have made that call a second time because I don't think what he realized was um, I would end up bringing like five molds there. I think he was kind of like, hey, if you have a mold or you know, something we could help you out with, like small time, let us know. But we ended up like, basically bringing, uh, bringing the whole company there. So um, I get back from Canada. I go up to this cookout thing at uh, Bonafide. And uh, I really um, go up to there and really like their guys. Thought the facility was really cool. Um, had a really good feeling about it. So in in that fire, I lost every mold but one. So the ultralight, we were running it at this other place and um, we're dialing it in and really hadn't even got it dialed in yet. So we take the so we take the ultralight up there. By the time we work out the deal that we're going to do molding and everything, it's probably like September, October. Um, so basically, I'm living off, we got the ultralight going, and I also do another product called Solo Skiff. So that's the entire company right now. We got, we got Solo Skiff and we got ultralight. Um, the kind of next phase and things we need to hit, we basically, that big order that I promised, so the first things that I submitted were the splash tube and the paddle board because that's what this, this large order was for. So double comes, um, paddle board comes in January. And this is when I just started to meet really great people. Like, um, and that's what a lot of the story's about, man. Just like the community um, and just really great people and, and just, uh, you know, you can go into so many cliches, you know what I mean? But just people having your back, you know? And um, I mean, a great guy I met was Chris Riggins. I mean, so knowledgeable in molding. He does um, Intec resins. And, you know, I've always been seeking, like, someone to really, like, you know, I don't want to overstate it, but, like, kind of mentor you. You know, someone in the industry that you could really trust that's not a competitor. And uh, this dude just, me and him clicked. And so we started. You know, if you think it's, you know, you think the challenge, it's like whatever I was at, whatever point I was at seemed like the hard part, you know, and it just, <laughs> it kept on being the hard part, you know. So it's like, oh, it's so hard to get these molds ready to be made. It's so hard to get these molds made. And then if all that seems hard, um, dial a mold in, you know, it's one thing to get a mold casted. It's another thing to, to really have it running perfectly. Um, so we start just working together, dialing these molds in, I'm learning. We get the double and paddle board going. We start filling these big orders. Um, next comes the uh, light tackle. I actually had a prototype of the light tackle. We actually, in that same time period, decided to redo it um, and, and just really ended up making an awesome boat. So we, we're filling the big order. Now we're, uh, we're filling the big order, and now we're starting to get into launching basically um, the fishing line and um, the first light tackle we ever ran me and Wade Harrison we filmed the walkthrough video in the in the in the shop of Bonafide and uh, it just shows you how many people like just the, how cool you know I'm, I'm ready I'm tired man we've been trying to get this boat we finally got it right you know it's kick-ass and I'm uh, I'm going home and Wade calls me up he's like dude Let's, let's shoot this product video, man. Like, so, I mean, here you got a, a guy, you know, who, he, you know, he doesn't work for me, nothing, you know, and he, he, he's, let's do it, man, encouraging me, you know. So, I'm going down 85, I turn back around, meet up with him, and we shoot the first, uh, we shoot the first walkthrough video of the light tackle. Um, and so now we start making the, the light tackle, the ultralight, the sup. We got the other, uh, my you know, rental rec models going and um, it's just like not only are we coming back but like the stuff we've created people are like really into you know it started like around the shop people were like man this stuff looks good Brandon's really cool like me and Jake Myers because I will design for food um, you know we laid everything out and 
So the first is like people in the shop, man, it looks good, it looks cool. You know, guys who I trust in the industry, but man, you, you got something here. And it starts flowing out to people, going out to dealers. And um, so I guess what I'm saying is like, it's one thing to come build it back. It's another thing to build it back and it'd be good. You know, like I'd be happy almost just to have it, but not only do we have it, but it's, it's, you know, it's good. And, um, and then I can see you and say it's good all day long, but it's, it's the industry starting to, to, to say it's good. Um, and really what I'm based in is paddle, you know, that's what it's about for me. And so with the reputation we're getting in the industry is really cool to me. We're getting the, the reputation of, you know, really good paddling boats. And, um, it's just great to be like, Hey, paddle, check it out. See what you think. And, um, so the, we're molding everything, you know, and it, you know, that's glossing over a lot, man, because I spent a lot of time away from my family up in South Carolina. Um, it, it's hard, man. Like the, the stress and the pressure of trying to get that thing, you know? And, um, it was, why, why start talking about this now? Um, because we might not fail now, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that's really, like, I, I mean, I'd say it jokingly, but uh, some stuff when you're, when you're going through it, it's so heavy that you, you know, I just had to get through it. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't really talk about it in the middle of it because I didn't know how it was going to go. But now, you know, we, we've made it through. The boats are being, you know, the boats are coming out really good. Um, and, I mean, there's, different reasons for wanting to talk about it um, we didn't what I'm kind of proud of we didn't make excuses this year like we you know the demand was really high I mean we, we the demand got so high we had to move two molds to another manufacturer just to keep up um, but we didn't it would have been easy to make excuses this year and we didn't really play that card I'm proud we didn't play that card um, we just did the best we could and, and I think we put out a really good product um, so we didn't we didn't play the card and also I mean that's a big part of it being being that I feel like it's gonna be we're gonna be good we're gonna be successful at this I feel um, we didn't make the excuses and and but ultimately you know I think it's important to um, there's a next challenge coming up right there's the next products to make there's the next season there's the off season we're gonna do cool new things uh, the big thing to me is I wanted to take a second and pause. You know, I think it's really important to take a second and pause, reflect back on it. Let's share the story, man, because it's, and it's, I'm not talking, I'm, this isn't about me saying, this is what I did. You know what I mean? It's, it's more about, I guess, how I would hope it could translate to other people would be, this was the worst day of my life, man. This is the worst thing I thought ever happened. I mean, I'm sure, you know, I know we talked, I know you know what I'm talking about. You know, this, this, it's over, it's poor, you know, somehow becomes, this huge blessing of new experiences, knowledge, new products, new relationships. So, I mean, without being like corny about it, I mean, that's really the idea is to share the message of just, you know, if you think this worst thing ever, or horrible things going on, if you can persevere, keep faith in it, keep working at it, that, um, you know, really amazing things can come from it. But, you know, so it's like a turn. You gotta bleed for it a little bit sometimes too. You know, you gotta go get it and earn it, and it hadn't been easy. But I also couldn't have done it, um, or we couldn't have done it without um, without a lot of the support we got and the faith to, to kind of you know, keep it going. What's next for Crescent? Um, stay relevant. You know, kind of bring the next stuff. You know, we we we, we got some good stuff, and now it's time to double down, get, make some good new stuff. I think we got to really figure out the supply chain. That's a big thing we're going to do. We're going to make sure we can um, match the demand out there. So I think maximize the current stuff we have, accessorize it, really do some cool custom stuff, start bringing new products, and um, and make sure that we can deliver what we say we're going to do. I mean, <laughs> so that's the plan.
don't know if you want to follow up with anything, but... Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. So over the course of a year, you went from having the worst day of your life to finding a way out of that, marrying the love of your life. Got married. Got married. Got married, yeah. Watched your daughter have her first birthday. Yep. Yeah. And reestablished, now what, six, five or six kayaks? Yeah, yeah, five. I had to literally do was riding back from bona fide. I think I'm having like PTSD because it's, it's like okay now and it's getting closer and I'm starting to feel it, man. I, Seriously, was like, came back from the bar, just riding down 85, just started crying, man. It was so, like, just decompressing from it, you know? Everything's running, everything's cool, filling orders. And I was, you know, that this review came out, like, saying top 10, what, you know, like, and it's not one thing, but, you know, it's like, yeah, it felt good, man. It was heavy. It, I really started to realize how heavy it was, you know, now that it, it's getting lighter, you know? So. I think my wife's happy that it's lighter. <laughs> Best piece of advice for somebody going through tragedy? It, it depends, I guess, what you're based in, man. You know? Like, I'm based in, in God. And I don't care what religion that is, period. But, like, that's, you know, and whether people want to hear that or not, you know, I'm based in that. So, without that rock, I don't know what you do. You know what I mean? Like, I think you can maybe make your friends or your family, I guess what you believe in, maybe that's a better way, because it's more open, you know? Find what you believe in and trust in that, because if if I didn't have that center, it'd be great to say like, this or that, but really, man, it was just staying centered in that. And so whatever version you could find of that, whether it's, you know, staying centered in your family's belief for you or, or your employee's belief for you or whatever, you know? Um, but me, that was it. I just stayed center, and um, I just surrendered it, man. Because the second I tried to start taking it back any time, I got reminded it wasn't me, you know what I'm saying, quickly. Uh, so that, that would probably be it. I guess the only other one would be um, just put your head down. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta work for it. You really want it, you gotta work for it. Give me that date again and give me give me one sentence about that date. July 5th, 2018. Um, redefining. <laughs> um, rough. Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix shit. <laughs>